Hello and welcome to my Legio Titanicus Warbringer Nemesis Titan build guide. It's going to be quite an exhaustive build guide. There will be parts where I will fast forward to a full construction of various parts and that's to save you time of watching me scrape every single mold line, cut every single bit of flash off and so on. But um, it's going to be a journey. I've never built one before. If you are subscribed to the channel and you watch the videos, you'll know that I have built Warhound Titans, Reaver and uh, the Warlord Titan. And the Warlord Titan is my favourite model. And a close, close second is the Thunderhawk. Uh, I think that kit is is fantastic. Uh, and goes together really really well. I wouldn't recommend this kit or the Reaver or even the Warlord as your first uh, Games Workshop or Forge World kit because it's one thing watching these kind of videos uh, to, to get a better understanding of these larger kits and what's the work that's involved and it's another thing actually putting what you've seen into practice and finding your own way around um, problems and issues and getting the most out of your, your hobbying skill it's much more beneficial for you to go through the motions yourself uh, and build up your, your hobby skills. So if you've never bought a Forge World kit before, I would recommend you go for something like a Contemptor Dreadnought, then work your way up to a Serastus Knight, uh, and then um, pick one of the Titans that has CAD instructions, such as the uh, this Nemesis Titan or the, even the Warlord. In some aspects, I think this uh, Nemesis will be a bit more challenging because it has a full carapace thing and it ha has uh, multiple weapons on the top. But we'll see as we go through it. I'm bringing my experience from all the, the kits that I've built uh, over the many, many years. Now, if you've already built a Warbringer Nemesis Titan, not a lot of point you watching this video. Uh, this is mainly if you're uh, going to buy one of these things and have a crack at it yourself. This video or these series of videos will be extremely useful. The first thing before you're going to build one of these is, or any large kit, is uh, grab yourself a coffee. <laughs> oh, that's good. Then make sure you've got a big, big uh, area mat that's all clear from models. I'll do a little uh, house tour. No, I won't. I'll do a little tour of the, the hobby desk and things in a moment. Find your construction guide. Uh, this was buried in the box of all the parts and I was running around like a headless chicken before I started this video trying to find this, keep this in a safe place. But make sure you've got no plastic models, nothing on, on, the, on the top so you can lay out all of the pieces individually and really work on them. Unlike the Warlord Titan where I uh, prepared all the parts, sprayed every single part individually and there's probably like 300, 400 parts or so um, and then put, constructed it all, um, with this kit, I will be constructing the main body, leaving out all the armor parts, and uh, then spraying the main body and trying to paint uh, the, the body itself. It's difficult for me to do that because with painting for myself, I'm such a perfectionist. So I will like to paint every single bolt <laughs> individually um, if I can. And you can see that on the Warlord Titan. I've painted each bolt like mithril silver, put a bit of um, Agrax Earthshade on it, then done a little bit of a highlight on every single bolt. So that's just where I am. And that's because it's a bloody expensive model. This is a bloody expensive model. This is over a thousand pounds for this thing. Uh, so it's worth taking all of that time. If you've taken the time to earn that kind of money uh, and put it down on a model that, you know, you can get cars that are cheaper than these, these things at the moment. So it's worth spending that time because you'll really appreciate it uh, over the years to come. You'll, you'll build it to such a high standard, you'll paint it to a, an incredible standard and uh, you will appreciate it for many years if you take the time and don't rush things. You know, there's there's no reason to rush, even if you've got a game coming up. There's no reason. I mean, who who plays with a Warbringer Titan anyway? Uh, <laughs> you know, with that Quake Cad and being four, 480 inch range, uh, if you were playing against me, I, I'd want to play on a 500 inch board, <laughs> put it that way, <laughs> just so that I could uh, make use of the full range of that thing. So yeah, more, more collector's pieces. Um, and uh, hobby projects more than actual gaming models. Um, anyway, so you got your coffee, you got your construction guide, you listened to me for about 10 minutes. Um, it's nice to have 
uh, one or two models to to motivate you uh, through this process. Um, I've got a couple, a few models that are motivating me um, and obviously speaking to you guys while I'm doing it. Um, one is of the, the Nemesis Warbringer. This is going to be a little bit different uh, to mine. Mine's got two uh, uh, volcano cannons instead of the Reva laser blaster. Uh, but it's a nice, uh, I say little model, it's a nice model to have because it's to scale. This is pretty much what mine's going to look like. I don't want this Titan in uh, a sort of striding forward pose. It's a fire support platform at the end of the day. It's got these anti-air guns. It's got this massive quake cannon. I don't think I'm going to have it at such a high angle, probably a little bit lower. That's going to be one of my things I'm going to look at when I'm building the, the quake cannon of, of just what elevation I can, I can put it on because I don't think you can adjust it. But it's nice to have a model of the model that you're building, um, typically. I try and avoid buying more of the same model, you know, Space Marines not included, uh, in terms of Titans and Walkers, because for me it's an experience and a different model is a different experience at the end of the day. I would love another Reaver Titan and another Warlord, but they're going to be the same experiences um, for me. Uh, this and Warbringer Titan, there's lots of different parts there uh, that I've never experienced before and um, that's one of the main reasons why I chose uh, the Warbringer <coughs> over another Reaver or another Warlord. So uh, without further ado, let's get cracking. Let's have a look at my hobby space uh, that, I, that I've got set up. So I've got this big, big um, cutting mat. Uh, the first stage of this, of the project uh, of these videos, of this video in particular, is just get, getting the, the basics down uh, for these 10-15 minutes or so, um, giving you an introduction into the project, showing the, the, the workspace and the tools, and uh, getting you set up ready to, to build it. The, the second video will come along quite soon after this one, but I'm not going to release them consecutively in terms of, I'm not going to release them one after another, day after day if that makes sense. It's going to be one video and then it could be a week or two uh, for the next one. But I will put them in a playlist uh, on the YouTube channel so you can just select the playlist and watch them all in order uh, if you so wish. At the moment on the channel I'm releasing a video every single day and I have done since the beginning of November and it's now, I'm, I'm shooting this video at the very start of May. Um, so that's uh, seven months or so of a video every day which I think I've done very well and you know if you'd like to support the channel, if you'd like to support what I'm doing, I would be very humbled if you could support it through Patreon uh, for as little as a dollar a month. I understand it's an awkward ask uh, to support kind of financially for a dollar a month when I'm uh, creating a, a video uh, of a model that's over a thousand pounds. So your first question would be, well, Super doesn't need the, the dollar a month. It's not really about that. I could still buy the model and not do a video and not spend all of this time going through it and being helpful and showcasing the model as well. I could just do it and not share it. And you know, these videos take time and that's time that I could be spent painting, which aggravates a lot of people. <laughs> um, or it's time I could be reviewing other models or just doing other things. So supporting through Patreon really does help. More of a way to say thank you um, for, for any help that I've, I've given uh, to you guys. And if you can't do it that way, um, please do buy your models from Element Games uh, using the affiliate link below, please, because uh, then that tells them that I've told you about them. And uh, I get a little bit of money from them when you buy a model and it doesn't cost you any extra to uh, use the link. A bit like a, an Amazon affiliate or something like that. And obviously the more help I get with the channel, the more unboxings and reviews I can do of new stuff, new armies that I'd never even um, thought about. The only army I don't have models for at the moment is Tau. So the more, <laughs> so, so if uh, Games Workshop do release a, a set uh, with Tau in and an army that I collect, which is highly possible, then I'll probably be all over that. Okay then, let's get cracking. So, got the little model over there, got the instruction guide, we'll go through that in a moment. I'm already zoomed out as much as possible, but if we go over here, here is what my motivation, my inspiration is at the moment. Uh, the Reaver Titan on the left was tricky to put together. Uh, the legs and the tubing were, the uh, carapace itself, um, the, the internal, I had to paint a lot of that first before I put that together. The, the Reaver Titan, it is expensive, but you do get a uh, fully detailed interior head 
and a fully detailed interior carapace. Uh, and what's brilliant about that kit is there's just so much more than meets the eye, if I want to use that. You know, from, from looking at it, it seems quite basic and straightforward. But you, you can detach the head uh, and take the, the top of the, the head and um, there's uh, you've got some detail in there. The top missile launcher is detachable. I wish Fortroid would hurry the hell up though and um, release uh, more carapace weapons. I'm so sick of that apocalypse launcher now. Um, but they have redone all of the battle titan weapons. You know, it's got the, the Reva laser blaster on the left and then the Gatling um, blaster on the, on the right, on our right. Um, they've redone those weapons, so if you are going to get a Reaver Titan and you get some different weapons, they're going to be the newer, improved CAD versions of them that um, were released uh, uh, to coincide with this Nemesis um, Warbringer, which was one of the best uh, outcomes for it. Not only did Forgewell release the Warbringer Nemesis Titan, but it then you know, spurred them on to uh, recreate uh, all of the Battle Titan weapons uh, in using CAD and they are, yeah, such an improvement over the, the older um, pieces. And then the Warlord Titan on the right is a big, big motivation. It just shows me that my hobby skills uh, have no bounds and the sky is no limit in terms of what I'm capable of. Uh, and I think that's, a, that's an important thing to have on the table when you're, you're building one of these kits, because one of these kits is, like I say, over a thousand pounds, it's hundreds and hundreds of parts. Uh, it's very, very daunting when you're met with a whole table full of resin uh, that you have to get through and you have to um, uh, finish and, and complete. And that is the end result. And it's good to have something to motivate you to show you what you can achieve, what the end result will look like. As you're building it and it's taking shape, and if you've got something in the colors you want it to, to be painted in, that's also a great motivator because you can look at the constructed pieces and you can look over at your other models and go, yeah, I can see that it's gonna look absolutely stunning in this black and gold color scheme that I've got. Anyway, enough about your motivations and, and all the rest of it. Let's have a look at these tools um, that, I, that I typically use. So the very first thing you're gonna need um, for this, uh, for this uh, project is a saw. That is like the number one thing. Games Workshop do do a, they don't do this saw anymore, but this is a Games Workshop saw. They do a little saw um, with a, like a little head. It might be worth purchasing something like this instead with a decent handle because you're going to be sawing a lot uh, of, the, of the chunks. Here's just one part. Here is the, the volcano cannon, um, the Battle Titan volcano cannon. And I initially clipped and clipped and clipped uh, the, these off when I first built the Warhound Titan. The Warhound Titan came out, you know, it, it's fine, nothing wrong with it. Um, but I was using clippers to clip these off don't do that, please. Please take the time and saw. I'll go through um, uh, cleaning these up in the in the next video because this is already turning into a bit of a project itself, this video. But still, um, get a saw, uh, one like this with a handle uh, and uh, get the Games Workshop one. I've got Games Workshop's little saw coming soon. It has different heads on it. Uh, it looks a bit fragile, but we'll, we'll see. I'll do a review of that saw. Anyway, so a saw is, the first tool that you should really uh, pick up, um, this little hobby saw. And um, when sawing the, the these blocks, these flash blocks off, or gates as they're sometimes called, it's up to you. Um, depending on the piece, uh, sometimes it's easier to saw directly to the gate uh, and then work on each one individually. Sometimes it's easier to work closer to the, the piece. I would suggest always going to the gate because uh, the, the angle where the gate is, is usually the same um, on, on the gate for all these pipes. Uh, but near the model, you're gonna have to cut a bit there and maybe there, and as you're cutting that, it might split this one off the, off the piece. So that's just a quick little tip. So anyway, saw. <laughs> uh, next thing is the clippers. Get some cheap, these are cheap old clippers. The, you know, they've, the, the metal itself has been um, <laughs> uh, bent. Um, so get some, some old clippers that you don't mind breaking if you're going through some hard resin uh, and they just break. Uh, these have lasted me years and years. Um, Games Workshop's ones are good, but please don't use them for the resin. Uh, please just stick them to plastic and soft plastic at that. Uh, even the scenery kits, I wouldn't use those plastic clippers for because the spring is inbuilt. It's prone to breaking. I've had a couple of clippers um, break on me before and for £20 for a pair of clippers, it's, yeah, it's, 
after you get through a few of them, it, it can be quite costly. So um, I would recommend you know cheap cheap clippers for this uh, for the resin model and use these all the way through it. Uh, next thing is your hobby knife. I just use one of these. I find it quite comfortable. Um, I've also got one of these, and yes, you could say, oh, well, this looks more comfortable, super. It, it does, um, but I find like I can get more precision out of this, and uh, I can also scrape the mold lines off uh, using the back, and the blades are very, very simple and easy to, to replace, and they cost peanuts. And this one, they're a bit picky to, to take out, uh, and for some reason, they rust more, but I don't know, it might just be the blade that I've got on here. Uh, but this is when, but this is when I wanna cut uh, larger chunks of resin. I know that sounds a bit odd, but this just keeps that blade in firmer and I feel like I've got more kind of leverage uh, and strength on, on the blade. Whereas this, I don't want that blade snapping and um, this is f sort of more finer work. Um, so yeah, two, two different types of blades, very, very important. Glue, right, right, we could do a whole video about glue. Um, I don't pin my models, uh, the Warlord Titan and the Reaver Titan, they're not pinned because I don't game with them. I don't take them around the world, I don't take them around the country, I don't take them to any exhibitions or anything like that. They are glued and built and then they just stay stud up. We don't have any earthquakes here. They're not in a place where they're gonna fall. You can pin them and where you are able to, I would suggest you do. Um, there are people on YouTube that pin absolutely everything uh, from Contempt to Dreadnoughts to Serastus Knights to the, you know, the, the Warhounds and, and, and bigger. It's really up to you uh, if you want to pin them. I've never had a model crumble and fall and break just from its own weight, but these pieces are big and they're heavy and they're expensive and, uh, you know, if you've got kids or you're putting these in high places, or you just want that stability when you're moving them around and battling at other people's houses and things, then yeah, um, I would suggest you pin them. But I'm not gonna pin this model at all. Let's see how it goes. It should be fine. The Warlord's not pinned. Um, but the glue I use is a mixture. I've got this um, this super glue from Gorilla Glue. Uh, it's impact tough uh, formula. There's a little bit in there and I've kept it like that because it, it does slow. Uh, that you know the least you've you've got as it runs out it does uh, run a bit slower I've got a fresh one somewhere though then uh, for the smaller stuff I've got the Loctite glue so they're the two two glues uh, and then for like the hips uh, and the knees and a couple of the carapace pieces like the um, for instance the the weapon uh, the shoulder points where the the shoulders attach to like the the first part of the, the arm because I'll magnetize um, the arm to the, the weapon itself uh, I will use uh, epoxy uh, I've used everything from this to the gorilla glue version this to me is is my favorite it works really well all you do is you just put um, equal amounts of uh, the resin and the hardener together in here uh, you mix it up with this little spatula a little while it does warm up it's nice because it's like a little chemical reaction thing and then scoop it on lather it up on both sides always good to score um into the the pieces that you want to make whether it's with the super glue or with this because it just gives a bit more friction and more kind of um grooves for the glue to slot into and to make a better bond rather than gluing uh you shouldn't really ever glue um smooth on smooth Put it that way because it's um yeah because then you're only reliant on the glue itself uh, as opposed to any kind of um, mechanism in terms of you know grooves and i'll go through that anyway when, when we're gluing so yeah resin glue is a is a must for this kit if you if you're not going to pin anything uh, speaking of pinning always have got some some hand drills at hand i've got an electric one somewhere as well might use that electric drill is good I'll go through that again when I'm magnetizing. I'll show you what I use um, uh, for, for, for that. But basically, you wanna be using like a pilot drill bit to, to go in first and then using something like this um, to then make a, a larger hole uh, to slot your magnet in. And 
try and get your magnets as flush as possible with each other because then that strengthens them their their pulling power if they are a few millimeters apart then it's weird how magnets work but basically their their pulling power is um it, it just deteriorates uh, exponentially the the further they are away but if you can get them nice and flush so that they are touching that is going to be fantastic again don't worry about your magnets losing magnetism <laughs> you'll be long dead before um, they, they start losing their magnetism. So don't even worry about your magnets, uh, you know, wearing out from you pulling and pulling them off, off the piece and things. They're going to last a long time. Um, we'll talk about magnets uh, again when I, when I get to those parts in the video. But I buy all my magnets from First for Magnets. Uh, everything from the smallest ones to the, the large uh, ones that I've got for the um, Warlord's uh, hips hip joint uh, so there you go that's all the the drill bits and things and um, for kind of finishing off oh it's also uh worth noting that you know cocktail stick will help if you're put, putting the magnets in um because yeah obviously it's not metal and then um, you know that will really help you uh manipulate uh, the magnets uh, once they're in once they're being set in um the position of them so something non-metal as a tool that's good uh, speaking of metal tools though I've got various files these old ones with the rough uh, grit I want to call it are, are perfect for resin um, I wouldn't necessarily use the plastic ones because they're much finer and they they're good for polishing up the resin as uh, you know to smooth out the the um, scratches that these will make um, but I wouldn't just put these on straight away I would I would use use these Again, a mask is very important. I haven't got it here, um, but please do wear a mask or do this outside. When I'm gonna be um, taking all the mold lines off and, and dusting these uh, off, it's not gonna be in this room. I don't have an extractor fan. I can't tell you enough with everything that's going on at the moment as well. There is a reason why um, it, they come with a uh, separate one of these, working with resin uh, assembly. Uh, look, you've got preparation look, you've got what I've said, which is your pin vices, your tweezers. Yeah, the tweezers, I do have tweezers um, in the form of my nice, lovely Leatherman Juice S2. I don't know what number they're on now, but I mean, these are like pliers, aren't they? But you know what I mean? So it's good to have something like that. Uh, yeah, going back to this, very, very important. It says specifically, uh, Forge World does not recommend them for use by anyone under the age of 15 without adult supervision. It says here, look, sanding resin can produce a very fine dust, so wearing a dust mask is advised. If you're doing it outside, I'd say wear a mask even outside because it might be a bit windy. It's not the dust that you can see that you should be worried about. It's all the dust you can't see. That's the stuff that gets into your uh, AVO lies and, you know, really, yeah, it's not good. It's, it's a foreign body. You don't want it inside you. It's not meant to be inside you. It can clog up things. Yes, you'll probably cough it out in a few years. You might absorb it. And yes, you've got uh, a whole tennis court uh, area of surface area for your for your lungs to to get your oxygen but it's not worth diminishing that if you can uh, avoid it so health and safety always with this kit with the plastic that you know the plastic models that's not bad at all but these resin models they do create a lot of dust and um, so I can't stress it enough to either um, sand these outside and wear a mask where possible. I'm not even going to be sanding these inside. You won't see me sand anything inside. To minimise the dust, it's actually worth um, dipping your, your files in water, uh, but then you may have rust issues and then the rust issues will go onto the model. So if you are going to um, uh, wet um, these files, make sure you dry them thoroughly. Uh, and you use like WD-40 if you are starting to get any any issues, uh, but that will minimize the, the amount of dust if you wet your files. Speaking of dust and things, uh, recommend one of these. Absolutely brilliant. Even after you've painted and finished your model and you need to go over and drill another hole or something like I have done in the, in the Warlord Titan, uh, having one of these little brushes, uh, little, it's a plastic brush. It's not, you know, it's not actual hair. Um, these are plastic bristles. These are what you want. Something quite rigid, uh, but but something that won't scratch the model either. You don't want anything with metal, metal um, uh, brush. Uh, so if you've got a little brush like this, which is quite flexible, it can get in the cracks. It can really get rid of that dust after you've been sanding because you want to remove most of that dust as possible before you even think about um, spraying the model. 
Okay, so that is a <laughs> very, very large part one of um, constructing the Nemesis Warbringer. I know it's half an hour and I haven't even shown you a piece of the model yet, well, other than the volcano cannon. Um, so what we'll do is we'll just have a look at this instruction guide uh, so that it so that this includes at least something of the um, Nemesis Titan. So let's have a little look. So. You'll get one of these if you buy the, I think you get the, the the model and the Quake Cannon as one. Whereas when it first released, you had to buy the Quake Cannon separately, I remember. I think the model was about £800, then the Quake Cannon was about 100 The Volcano Cannons were, I think, 50 or £60 each. And then you had to buy the head separate. Yeah, it sucks that you can't get everything in one for one price, but they do have the Titan Builder on the Forge World website, and uh, you can go through that and uh, build, build your own. There is only one carapace weapon at the moment, the Quake Cannon. Will Hayes, the guy that designed this, he designed the, the Warhound and the Reaver, I think, as well. He said that there is scope of having different carapace uh, weapons. And it's good because, you know, on my Adeptus Titanicus model, I haven't glued it. So when they do create another one, I can just pop the new one on there, whether it be a Vortex missile or whatever. Anyway, let's have a little look at the instruction guide. It's quite a beefy one but it is all in CAD, so it should be straightforward. Long are the days of the uh, Warhound Titan. <laughs> Literally, you get like six pages, six A4 black and white pages of pictures of the model of what it, you know, of different parts. It's, yeah, atrocious. Nowhere near like this. I mean, you, you didn't get this exploded view of every single part, um, looking detailed with all of the descriptions and things. It's worth going through this. I know it sucks, but it is worth going through each part. Make sure you've got uh, all of them. Uh, they're all numbered um, as well. Uh, the, the, that's the whole like carapace there. These are the, the two legs in the exploded view. Uh, and, um, and then you've got a couple of um, you know, single miniatures as well. Uh, then uh, it goes through posing the Legio Titanicus Warbringer Titan. Uh, it says it, it's a good idea to plan how you want the Titan uh, to, to pose. And this is the first part. How exciting. We're going to be going through this a little bit in the next video, although it will be mainly um, preparing the, the parts uh, for this project. Um, but it starts you off with a nice little front toe piston cylinder there, and you've got bent toe optional assembly. The toes are quite nice, they're quite solid, chunky, and um, they've got a nice gait on, on this model. Uh, I don't know whether they've followed that through. Yeah, they followed it through to the end look uh, with that gait. It's striding forward. I've got all of my Titans are striding forward. I mean, the Warhounds in a stop pose, they're not moving forward. If I get a couple more Warhounds, then I'll have them running at full pelt, definitely. Um, but this one, I don't want it to be striding forward like the Warlord and the, and the Reaver. I want it to be a solid firing platform, uh, which might sound a bit boring to you guys, um, but that's what it is. It is a firing platform for the, vol for the uh, Quake Cannon. It can be striding forward, sure, but uh, I would definitely keep it as far back uh, as possible especially with those armed um, with those volcano cannons. Anyway, so this is how you um, construct the, the toes uh, and, the, and the feet, and then you've got a little bit of a leg, leg action. Uh, then you've got to try to ensure that each leg socket is close to the same height as possible. That's very important. It uh, will really help you with the pelvis and the leg couplings later on. Uh, you've got hip piston rings, they're very important. Don't overlook those. They slot onto the uh, tops of the legs as well. And um, you know, once you glue all these pistons, they actually do help with the um, you know rigidity of the model. Uh, you you know you can easily pin these through. You can put a pin all the way through uh, and through into the hips themselves, uh, and then you've got a nice solid, strong, um, reinforced uh, bar through there. Then they start putting the, the leg plates on. Uh, and the armor pieces, not going to do any of that, not interested. The uh, the armor pieces are going to be one of the last things I glue on because uh, I'm going to be painting all those separately. I will blue tack them on or whatever. This is how to build the torso. <laughs> At the moment, it just looks like it's just got two pieces, which is beautiful. you got these vents as well that are two pieces. The upper deck looks straightforward to, to put together. The upper assembly as well and these power conduits. Uh, and also the void shield generators uh, too. 
Um, then finally they've got the torso assembly and the and they say they recommend not gluing the stabilizer assembly to the uh, legs assembly it will allow the torso and the legs to be separated uh, to aid storage or transportation it doesn't actually say uh, how you know go through like magnetization but I'm gonna try and magnetize that if possible it should just sit on there though it's domed Unlike the Warlord Titan, which is an absolute pain, the Warlord Titan isn't domed, so it just is a plug and socket thing. It's mainly, you know, made for for being magnetised. But you can get some awkward art angles on that because it's not domed. But yeah, there are probably reasons why uh, it's not domed because the the top carapace for the Warlord is just so so heavy. You've got everything on there: the head. The, the guns, all the four guns actually, all the armor pieces, it all weighs an absolute ton. Um, then you've got the these uh, couplings and the power cables that go to the weapons. It does suck that they've done it that way. Uh, I might just leave them off for the time being, um, but the Anvilus also cannons, the anti-air guns look quite straightforward to put together. Um, and yeah, you don't need to glue them. I'm gonna, um, they are uh, prime targets for me to magnetize those and I'll go through that. And then they put the armor plates on the front and then you can place them on there. You don't need to glue them, these these two guys. I think I might just put them on bases and have the bases reflect the, the upper deck of the Warbringer. You've got the Nemesis, um, you've got the neck joint there. It does say you if you want the head to be uh, removable, you've got the option to, to magnetize it. Um, and then a number of holes have been made to accommodate six by two millimeter magnets, not included. So they've actually put holes there to magnetize it. I was lucky enough with the Reaver and the Warlord actually just to put one magnet in there and one magnet was enough. Um, so for this one, I might just put two just because they're giving me four holes. You know, might as well make, make the most of as many holes as possible. And on that note, uh, then they go on to showcase the, the other items that are available, such as the head, the Quake Cannon and the Volcano Cannon. We will go through those in separate kind of build guides. I want to say they're not going to be that um, complicated. They're going to be quite straightforward, probably one or two videos each of those. Um, but this is the main, main video here where I will go through, you know, constructing this whole model. So there you go, quite an exhaustive video. Thank you for joining me for this, uh, you know, part one of this epic journey for the uh, Legio Titanicus Warbringer Nemesis Titan. If you've got any questions, if you're starting out building this, please do, as always, put them in the comments below. Um, me or other, all of us in the community will no doubt help you out because it is a big project and it's a costly model and we all want to get these Titans looking amazing as they possibly can. So thank you ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching. The Emperor Protects.